Welcome to Breaking the News. This week we're in the Scottish borders. We're in Kelso. And this is Breaking the News, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. And this week, we are coming to you from the Tate Hall in Kelso. <laughs> Love it. Uh, joining me, our regular guest, Gemma Smith, the first woman of weather, Judith Ralston, and facing them, <laughs> our comedian, Elaine Malcolmson, and stand-up, Mark Jennings. <laughs> news this week. Congratulations to the newly unified lightweight world boxing champion. Yes, Edinburgh's own Josh Taylor. The Tartan Tornado won the title last Saturday and his victory came as no surprise because if you call any Scotsman a lightweight, you'll end up getting punched in the face repeatedly. <laughs> The death of IS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has been warmly received by broadcasters all over the world. Not because he was the leader of a terrorist organisation, but because of how amusing it was to watch Donald Trump try and pronounce his name. Abedi, Abedi, Kibedi, Kibedi. It's Batman. <laughs> And Netflix is trying out a new feature allowing the audience to speed up shows. The option means viewers will still be disappointed by new Adam Sandler films, but just a wee bit faster. <laughs> uh, so there we go, we are in Kelso this week. It's lovely to be with you and lovely to have such a great panel on. I'll come to you first, Judith Ralston. It's been sunny this week. <laughs> so the only reason we got person. you on. <laughs> If it was raining, you were only getting near the show. <laughs> Do you find that people blame you for the weather, if it's good or bad? In a comical way, yes, yeah, they do. I mean, they're always taking to being funny about it. I also think as well that it's gone a bit weird with the weather where they're starting to name the storms. Because mm -hmm. it started, I think, a year or so ago. We had the beast from the east, then we had the pest from the west. I don't know, Judith, what's going to happen if one comes at us from the front? <laughs> you might be in trouble at that point. <laughs> Jim Smith, we're on with each other every week in the That's show. It's great. been seven days since I've seen you. What's been happening, mate? Oh, well, finished calving the cows this week, so I'll ask her a calf, so right. that's fine. So I mean, I can get away down here and don't have to bring her with me, so that's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's surreal sitting next to Judith <clears throat> Ralston, because, yeah. you know, farmers were always obsessed with the weather. And, uh, I feel for a lot of these weather forecasters get abuse shouted at them by farmers in, in, in living rooms up and down rural Scotland, you know, if the weather's not going their <laughs> way, you know. Yeah. But see, when it's Judith saying, oh, sorry, farmers, it's going to be wet all this week, you just hear folk going, aye, you didn't worry about that, Judith. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Judith's on the show. How excited are you to be on tonight? Well, I'm quite excited because um, I actually, I put this out as a tweet, but it really happened, which is uh, that my dad had to sleep on the couch because my ma caught him Googling the BBC Scotland weather woman. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's nice to meet the woman that's responsible for my parents' divorce. <laughs> And Elaine, what about you? How are you doing? I'm really good, Des. Anything going good. on? Anything exciting happening? I'm just pleased to be in Kelso. Last time I was here, I was with Jim, and uh, I met a man who had 3,000 sheep. Well, I was thinking that must be, at best, an estimate. Yeah. Like, how would you count them? <laughs> <laughs> You'd never get past 500, would you? <laughs> Just nod off. <laughs> that is our panel. Let's crack on with round one. Broken news round where our teams have to guess the two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Elaine and Mark, it's over to you. Can you tell me our first story? MPs are gearing up for Christmas in Edinburgh City Centre after voting overwhelmingly for Airbnb-style short-term lets on the 12th of December. Jeremy Corbyn is pledging Labour will take on what he calls tourist hotspots. 
<laughs> Some big promises made in that. Uh, what do we think then? Obviously, there's lots going on in the news this week and in that mashup. Mark, any thoughts on what our first story might be? We're having an election. It's going to take place on the 12th of December, and it's the first election that we've had in December since 1923. So exciting times ahead. <laughs> yes, it's happening. That was, of course, correct. It is the first Christmas election since 1923, and that was the first time that Jacob Rees-Mogg was elected into Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the news that Boris Johnson has finally got something that he wanted, a general election in time for Christmas. On hearing this news, the Lib Dem leader, Joe Swinson, rushed out and bought herself an advent calendar, as it's the only way she'll be opening the door to number 10 anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> So she says that she thinks she can become Prime Minister, but I think that just goes to show like the level of like delusion that you can have if you're brought up in Mogai. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe Swinson, the candidate for the SNP that's running against her, is actually a girl that I know she stayed, she grew up near me and she's like younger than me as well. Like, so all this talk that Swinson's been having about beating Boris and beating Corbyn, it'd be hilarious to me if she couldn't even beat a lass who was in the year below me in school. <laughs> Judith, what about you? I mean, it's a time of the year, in all honesty, in the build-up to Christmas, there's a lot of other things going on. Uh -huh. Are we going to be that concerned? I don't think so. And find the time to really get into an election? I actually do not think so. And I think it's got to the stage now where people are going to vote for who they hate less. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim, what do you think then? Obviously, there's this Christmas election. It's finally happening, at least. Yeah. Do you think we'll get the turnout and the engagement from the voters? What day is it on? Is it a Thursday or something? Does that mean the crankies will have to have a night off, Panto? They will. Aye. Definitely. That'll be a big impact. It will be huge. <laughs> no, but seriously, if there's no pantomimes that night, that, that could put Scotland into decline. <laughs> but yeah, but seriously. I love that. Where's your economy? <laughs> it's behind you. <laughs> 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 the difficulty they're saying is that people are maybe fatigued. I don't know if that's true or not, about going out to vote all the time or that maybe it's not the best time of the year. So how should we get people to come out and vote to make sure they take part in this election? Any ideas? No, it's going to be a hard sell for Jeremy Corbyn, isn't it? Trying to convince people who are out doing their Christmas shopping to vote against capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see them, uh, politicians, instead of doing door to door, just coming down chimneys. <laughs> Oh, do you, know, do you know what they need? A Christmas single. Oh, oh yeah. Now you're talking. Nigel Farage could do a Chris Rea cover, driving people back home where they came from for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yes, it is, of course, the Christmas general election. This week, of course, children across the country have been dressing up as Boris Johnson for Halloween taking their inspiration from Brexit. Uh, those children, though still undecided whether to come out or stay in, have been dressing up instead as Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> yes, it's the announcement of a general election for the 12th of December. That is the right answer. Well done, Elaine and Mark. You get two points for that. And it's now over to you, Jim and Judith, to tell us what was the other story we were after. <laughs> MPs are gearing up for Christmas in Edinburgh city centre after voting overwhelmingly for Airbnb-style short-term lets. On the 12th of December, Jeremy Corbyn is pledging Labour will take on what he calls tourist hotspots. So, we had a lot in there, a lot going on, Judith. I don't know if you can identify, as well as the election bits and pieces, what other story you could hear in that mashup? Well, I think it's about the, the Airbnb that's kind of got a wee bit out of control and the government or the councils are thinking about bringing in some sort of laws to regulate it, as far as I know. That is the right answer. We're talking about demands for more controls for online short-term lets, as figures reveal a threefold increase in them since 2016, most notably at number 10, Downing Street. <laughs> Jim Smith, what about you then? Airbnb, I don't know if it's something that's in your part of the world. Uh, Edinburgh and the Highlands seem to be the most popular Ab parts in Scotland. Absolutely, yes. It seems to be that the more rustic and ramshackle it is, because the hipsters love all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, the more you can charge. So, you know, I've got a bit of corrugated iron on the side uh, <laughs> with a pallet. And there's hipsters from Edinburgh coming up and I'm getting like 170 quid <laughs> for a night. And I, I've got a, an old cow in a big cattle water trough and I've put a, a 
a heating element from an iron, from a, from a kettle inside it. And that's a hot tub. Right. <laughs> and, and they love it. Uh, Listen, mine. if you want to stay at Jim's death trap, then... <laughs> Elaine, obviously you've experienced the farmhouse breakfast. Yeah, that's it. Well, <coughs> Jim's right, people will stay anywhere. Like, you can stay in a shepherd's hut or a tree house. Um, you can even get an extended stay in a tree and carriage. Although that's just most Scott Rail journeys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Mark? Are you someone that's used an Airbnb? I've used it a few times, like, uh, they're saying they're bringing it in in Edinburgh, which would be really handy for, like, when you're performing at Edinburgh Festival. Like, is this year I've seen uh, a flat, and it was going for £3,000 a week for performers at the Fringe, right? And it wasn't even that central. It was actually here in Kelso. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Edinburgh South? Quick <laughs> <laughs> commute, innit? Community groups and residents mainly cited negative implications of short-term lettings such as antisocial behaviour. We don't want to hear people next door shouting and screaming at all hours, said Boris Johnson's neighbours. <laughs> well done, Jim and Judith. You get two points for that. It was the mashup of the announcement of the general election and the increase in Airbnb lets in Scotland. And at the end of that round, the teams are all square. Now, so much of our news is about public opinion, so for this round, we've gone out and about on the streets of Kelso and found some people to comment on the news. <laughs> so, Jim and Judith, for your team, we spoke to local fishing store staff, Claire, Elaine and Ronnie. What story do you think that they're on about here? I was in a family of four children, so we all used to anticipate what was coming to the door. My main memory is in the wintertime, the, the tops uh, coming off. I think it's very nostalgic, but it's also very practical. Well, I actually now know how I'm bald, because the person who did this uh, was bald, but my father had a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, within there, there might have been a few clues that could drive you to what you think the story is. Jim? Uh, I believe that there's a big rise again and I'm glad to see uh, local milk produce getting delivered uh, by milkmen, funnily enough, <laughs> and, uh, and glass bottles. It's great. It's fantastic. Here, here it is. It's the news that business is booming again for the nation's milkies as eco-conscious consumers try to cut down on the use of plastics. There are many advantages of using a milkman. It's better for the environment. You support a local business and your neighbours will know if you're dead. <laughs> Do you know, everybody in Edinburgh's granny had their milk delivered by Sean Connery. Yes. That is like an urban myth. Oh, he used to deliver my granny's milk, honestly. I'd love to ask him, say, Shemmy Shkim. Shemmy Shkim. Sean Shings Christmas. <laughs> Elaine, what about you? Are you excited the return of the milky and the home delivery of glass milk bottles? Yeah, it used to be just semi-skimmed and you full fat milk and now you get uh, the soy milk and the organic milk, milk, and you even get milk from nuts, which <laughs> must have come as a surprise to the bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Any other older services you'd like to see brought back? Any thoughts, Jim? We've got well, the milk back. Anything else you'd like to well, see? Well, I, I was just going to say anyone with freedom in the city in Glasgow can graze cows in Glasgow Green, so they could, you could just go down to Glasgow Green and get your milk direct from the teat. You know, <laughs> and there's Billy Connolly just standing there. You know. <laughs> oh, tickety moo, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Any other services you like to see brought back? Military service. Oh, go on then. Get all these snowflakes off their phones back on the battlefields where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few in the audience going, he's right, he's right, he's right. <laughs> Uh, so obviously we've got this comeback of the milk bottles being delivered to your door. If you could have anything else delivered to your door every morning, what would it be and why? I'd just like to get the stuff I've actually ordered instead of that wee slip that says, sorry we missed you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the news. It seems very positively received that milk is now being delivered door to door once again. I tried getting a delivery of skimmed milk, but after three bounces, it just smashes against the front door. <laughs>
That is a stupid joke and I love it. <laughs> right, Elaine and Mark, here is local bridal shop staff, Carol and Chloe. What are they talking about here? It's just a bit annoying and you just think, I know, they're, you know, they think they're having fun. It does bring a community together. Um, it's good for everybody to just go and watch together. There was always great excitement because it was always dark. Um, we felt like we were out really late at night. At New Year, they're being used where there's a lot of alcohol involved. And again, it makes it quite unsafe. <laughs> Don't know what happened there, but I think one of them exploded. <laughs> So, Elaine, did you pick up any clues in there? Uh, I think this is uh, about fireworks. Um, you're talking about putting restrictions on fireworks to prevent them being used in an irresponsible and unsafe way. So it seems to be then perhaps a sensible option to go for organised displays and not the back garden displays. However, some say that that is punishing <coughs> the people that are responsible with fireworks. What do you think of this? Mark, I'll bring you in here. Do you think this is a good ruling that's coming in or is it a wee bit over the top? I think it is a bit too easy to get a hold of fireworks. It's like, see, when I was younger, it always seemed that the people in my school that got a hold of fireworks were ironically the biggest rockets. And like, <laughs> there's nothing worse than finding out that your class bully has just like, assembled a missile. You know, no. <laughs> well, in Northern Ireland, you have to have a license for fireworks anyway, because mm -hmm. we can't be trusted. Um, <laughs> you get a provisional license and that allows you to do sparklers. We go to the one in the village and there's always some prick in a high-vis jacket going, step back please, step back, step back, I'm in charge here, step back, ten foot, ten foot. You know, there's always guys like that. Yeah. So we burn My up. husband. <laughs> <laughs> we always put the tops in on bonfire night, 7th of November, because that means they're lambing, start lambing, or the ewes start lambing the 1st of April. 7th so, of November? Aye. Well, no, when's, when's bonfire the night? The 5th. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in, they're I mean, the, the whole phrase is, remember, remember, to him, the 7th of November. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no wonder he's like, nobody else is letting off fire. <laughs> Be quiet here. <laughs> get, get back. Ten foot. Ten foot. It's just a security guard. Turned <laughs> up two days late with a rocket. Get back. <laughs> Help me. Burn them, Margaret. Burn them. <laughs> Seventh of November. I leave Margaret out of this. I know exactly. <laughs> So, if we're looking at organised displays only, it means that the private fireworks displays as of next year could be a thing of the past. What would you replace them with? I think we should all get our lightsabers out and we could just shoo, 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 and use the, the vocal effects as well. That sounds like a great idea. That's not it? bad, yeah, because obviously the final Star Wars. I've got films plenty, yeah, I've got loads out. of them in my house. Right, okay. You've got a lot in that house. <laughs> <laughs> Your lightsabers. I've even got my dad's ashes still in there. <laughs> That took oh, a turn. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Previous bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> the possible crackdown in personal firework use is the correct answer. And two points go to Elaine and Mark. <laughs> this round is all about who is in the news. I will play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So, Elaine and Mark, you're up first this time. Who is this? I would bring it into the bedroom. I always wanted to sleep with these animals. I wanted them close to me all the time. <laughs> Trying to read into some of the clues. Mark, have you any thoughts of who that famous person might be? I believe it is the Spring Watch presenter, Chris Packham, who is unhappy at the treatment of animals in TV shows like I'm a Celebrity. So, yes, Chris Packham is back in the news this week criticising the makers of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here for using animals during the Bush Tucker trials. But if you take the animals out of it, does it lose something? Or do you agree with Chris Packham that we should find another way, another source of entertainment? Um, well, Chris Packham, the thing is, he, he doesn't like the stereotyping of the animals um, on I'm, I'm a Celebrity. He objects to the animals being categorised as dirty and dangerous. I object to the people and I'm a celebrity being categorised as celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> well, they obviously, they, they make them meet 
things like testicles and stuff of animals in the show and like see if they want an alternative could they not come up with like sort of vegetarian testicles like mm -hmm. corn on the knob <laughs> <laughs> There's a product you'll be Googling tonight. <laughs> well, obviously, if you go in this show, it's par for the course that you'll end up eating something pretty disgusting. So here's a question for you. What's the worst thing that you have ever eaten? Uh, I bought a wee bag of those chocolate coins that you get, right? And I ate them. I didn't realise they were gluten-free chocolate. I don't know if you ever had gluten-free chocolate, but it was it, it's disgusting. It tastes like sawdust or something. And like, I always thought that I really liked chocolate, but it turns out I don't. I just like gluten. <laughs> Elaine, what about you? Let's have a think, rack your brain. What's the worst thing you've ever eaten? Vicks Fable Rub. <laughs> I felt like a dragon. <laughs> How drunk were you? Or, or was it just a mistake? Well, you should always read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Any oh. other disgusting things you've eaten? I was tricked into eating dolphin once. Ooh. I was in holiday. In yeah, uh, no, in a restaurant. And the guy, <laughs> <laughs> the guy said to me, do you want to try this fish? I was on holiday at the time. And uh, at the end of it, it was his big joke with the tourists. And he said, you've just eaten dolphin. And I felt, I felt really bad. I must admit, because I didn't think I was eating it. You know, well, I know, and that's what he was saying. It's just fish and we catch it. But he was trying to tell me, oh, it's not one of the good looking dolphins. <laughs> When it talks, exactly. I didn't want to eat it. I'm certainly not wanting to shag it, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, two points to Elaine and Mark. That was, of course, Chris Packham. Now to you, Jim and Judith. It's your turn. Who is this and why are they in the news? I was a mistake, incidentally, because they didn't think they had enough money to start a family. Jim, any thoughts? Oh, I see uh, Thompson. Emma Thompson. That is Emma Thompson. So why are we talking about Dame Emma Thompson this week, then? Oh, she's a dame now. Uh, aye. It was a waiter, a waiter uh, asked for a selfie yeah. uh, when she was eating her tea at a restaurant and, uh, and then the waiter ended up getting in the sack. That's the story, so she's yeah? now up in arms about that, trying to get the boy his job back. Yeah, here, here, that is the story. It is the news that Dame Emma Thompson is said to have been horrified to learn a waiter lost his job for asking for a selfie with her. Judith, do you get asked for selfies quite a lot? I do. Yeah, any strange places it's happened to you? In toilets. <laughs> There's two men waiting outside the toilet and waiting for a stick a selfie with me when I was coming out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, well... What do you say? Well, did you wash your hands? <laughs> just... <laughs> Let me First take thing. it, guys. <laughs> no, just... Oh, I don't want to hold the camera. So, uh, yeah. What do you think about this, Elaine? Is there a right way, then, of getting a celeb selfie? Well, I remember the good old days when you would stand outside a radio station for seven hours to get a photo with Rick Astley, and then on the way home in the bus, you'd realise you hadn't wound the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> Different times. Yeah. What about you, Judith? I know that you talked about getting selfies. Have you ever had a selfie with, selfie with a famous person? Is there a right way to go about it? The Queen Mother. <laughs> Queen Mother? God, how far down did you have to oh. dig? <laughs> so, right, full story, where and when? Well, she came, I used to be at the, what is now known as the Conservatoire of Scotland, but I, was, I studied there at uh, the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. Mm -hmm. So when they transferred from the old building in Glasgow to the new one, the Queen Mother came to open it, and I happened to be walking past as she came out of the principal's office, and I got so excited, I was 18 years old, I ran up and I went, oh, you're the Queen Mum! <laughs> you know, I got, grabbed her by the arm, and then I started going, rambling on about what a lovely colour of emerald she had on, and how, and she's staring at me going, but horrified. You, well, you know that's against I, royal I protocol. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that. And somebody took a photo and I'm... <laughs> and she's like... <laughs> Have we got an embarrassing selfie moment here on the panel? Judith alluded to one or two that she's had. Mark, any embarrassing selfie moments? You know the actor Robert Lindsay? He played the dad in My Family on the yeah. BBC. Well, one night in the Edinburgh Festival, I was in this artist bar and I seen him and I went up and was kind of drunk and I was like, oh, hi, Robert, listen, I oh, just wanted to say hi. I know that's not a done thing. I loved you and my family. And we look, would it be all right to get a selfie with you, Robert? That'd be great. And he looked a bit annoyed, but I thought, like, he's probably, you know, know what to talk about stuff he'd done in the past. I was like, that's great. Thanks very much, Robert. I'll see you in a later. Have a good night. And then I walked back over to my pals and my mate said to me, 
So what was Angus Dayton sent you there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dame Emma Thompson is the right answer. Two points go to Jim and Judith. <laughs> and it's time now for a final quickfire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. I'll read out a headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. So get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. Here we go again. That's the totally energised BBC political correspondent Chris Mason there. Right, teams, here we go. Fingers on buzzers. Your first question. Scots do what for an average of 5 hours 34 minutes? Repeat ourselves in England. <laughs> <laughs> totally get that. <laughs> Live in the moment. <laughs> uh, Scots do what for an average of 5 hours 34 minutes? Is it blather on a doorstep saying, you coming in? No, I'm not coming in. I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Scots do what for an average of five hours and 34 minutes? Sleep. Scots sleep for an average of five hours, 34 minutes per night. Well done, Judith Ralston. Good on you. A 50 stone what was removed by firefighters from a flat? A fire truck. <laughs> Just trying to think of stuff that's 50 stone. No, no. Uh, I, I think the fire truck might be a wee bit heavier. Um, <laughs> a 50 stone what was removed by firefighters from a flat? Baby. <laughs> a well fed 50 stone baby is not the right answer. But somewhere between a fire truck and a baby is what you're saying, 50 stone? Is that? <laughs> that's, that's the scope that you're working with. Right. Between a baby and a fire truck, somewhere in the middle, a 50 stone fort was removed by firefighters from a flat. Is that a rat? No, it's bigger than a rat. 50 stone rat? What are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Have a think, Mark. It's some livestock. It's an animal. It weighs 50 stone. It was removed by firefighters from a flat. What is the answer? Milkman. No! <laughs> <laughs> a 50 stone pig was removed by firefighters from a flat. Here we go again. Ah, there we go. That is our klaxon, which means that Chris has masoned, and it's all over at the end of the quiz. Our winners this week are Elaine Malcolmson and Mark Jennings! <laughs> to Jim Smith and Judith Ralston! <laughs> and we'll leave you with the breaking the news, breaking news just in. Match of the day host Gary Lineker has said his family reckon he's the spitting image of James Bond star Daniel Craig. Lineker is famously the face of Walker's Crisps and after that statement, presumably now, spec savers. <laughs> And a couple are celebrating their golden wedding anniversary. 50 years after the groom hit the headlines when he was tied to a bridge on his stag night. When asked what was the secret to a happy marriage, the wife explained, not telling him where the key is. <laughs> the news is broken. I've been Des Clark. Goodbye! <laughs> A whole new host of characters arrive later here on BBC Scotland. Brand new sketch show Pity Party begins at 11.30. Football chat next though as we get comfy on the couches for a view from the terrace.